All right, so once you have your pattern pieces cut out and you have your fabric selected, you're gonna wanna lay that out on the fabric. Now, you, if you're going to use a t-shirt knit, you wanna make sure that the fabric stretches in the way that it's gonna go around the face. So on this piece, the face one, that should be horizontal when you lay it on the fabric. Same with the cheek one should be horizontal and the mouth one should be horizontal when you lay it on the fabric. So make sure that your um, fabric stretches. Remember, horizontal when you put the pattern piece on and then you can go ahead and um, lay as many as close together as you can. So you can see I have the three different pieces. They're in three different piles. I also have right sides together so they're ready to rock and roll right through the sewing machine as, or in my case, I'm gonna be using the serger. So when I pick up the pieces, I know that my pair is right sides together and I'm just gonna feed them through the machine. Okay, so the next piece of this is I'm just going to start feeding them through and because I'm doing it, them on my serger, I'm also going to chain sew. So I'm gonna take all of my masks, the face, the main big piece, I'm gonna sew all of those together in one run. And then I'm also going to sew all of my um, mouth pieces together and I can keep doing that all at once. Okay, you're gonna notice on my serger that I am using three spools of gray thread. Remember, if you're shelter in place, you're not gonna have all the perfect materials. Also, um, for me, this was trying to use up some of my stash. So I'm not only being sustainable, I'm also um, giving a benefit to somebody instead of having this fabric and thread sit in my totes. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and sew this. I just have a three thread overlock on. I'm gonna cut just a little bit off. It's not my widest one. Um, it's just the the medium sized one, a little bit wider than the narrow. It allows for a quarter inch seam. And again, we're just gonna feed these, keep feeding right through so that we don't have any cut. And just keep doing that until you have all of them sewn together. You will notice on this piece of fabric that you can't really tell the right side from the wrong side. Um, as one of my friends used to say, if you can't tell the right side from the wrong side on a galloping horse, it doesn't matter. You should have a big long string like this. And then we're going to go ahead and cut those apart. Okay, so now you've got your three separate piles. Here are your face pieces. They're all surged together at that center seam. You've got your mouth pieces. Again, they're all surged together at the center seam and then here are your cheek pieces. Now the thing that I did not think that these pattern instructions uh, told very well is your next step. So you're going to take your face piece, put that so that the right side is up, then you want to take your mouth piece and you're going to lay that right on top and make sure you match your center seams on both ends. So down here and up here, you're matching your center seam. Now there are some markings on the pattern piece as to how far you overlap them, but honestly, it's just as easy to take your cheek pieces and overlap them so that they match up with your pattern. So you're just gonna take and put the, whoops, I'm not doing that very well. You're just going to match up those ends and then overlap it. Now we put the mouthpiece down first because you want that piece here so that when the filter goes in, it's easy to just slide it in and slide it out. So you're going to put, um, again, the other cheek piece and it's going to be right sides together, right sides together with your um, face piece. And then that cheek piece just overlaps on your mouth piece. And so really the mouth piece only shows about this much. Now, if you're going to serge it like I am, what I do then is I just pin it right here so that I don't worry about sewing over the pins. 
and then I'm just going to go to the serger. I'm just going to serge up here, all the way along here. And then I'm going to serge the other way. So I'm just doing the top, serging on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now I'm ready to stitch. Um, you'll notice that I did not finish this edge at all and I did not finish the other edge of the mouthpiece, right? This is the benefit of using the t-shirt material. It's not gonna go anywhere. And actually, you know, our hope is that hopefully they won't have to use these face masks for a long time. They're just something that's going to be uh, used to carry people over. So there's no reason to put extra work into the project. So now you're just gonna surge. Um, Again, we're doing the top, top and the bottom. When you're surging it, cut just a little bit off. So that just makes a nicer stitch. Okay, so now you can see that we've surged along the edges, both the top and the bottom. Now what you'll notice is that on the ends, I did not do any stitching. The pattern tells you to do this, but I think it's so much easier to turn the mask inside out from here. So now you're just going to take and open up this little spot here and then you're just going to turn the mask right side out. Okay, so now you've got your mask turned right side out. You can see why it's nice if it's a contrast because it's easy to see. Here's that opening and what's going to happen is if they have filters, they can just slide those in right there. So it's real easy to find that opening and just have that happen. Now you've got your ends that are raw. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to serge across the ends like this. So you're going to serge on both ends. And then that is what it's going to make the casing for your elastic. Okay, and so really the final sewing step here is now you're creating that casing for the elastic to go through. So depending on what size elastic you're gonna use, you wanna make sure that it's wide enough for the elastic to go through. Remember that you do want to reverse because that the end of this is going to take some stress. So go ahead and finish up that casing. Again, make sure you back stitch. Whoops. And go forward. And again, my machine is just threaded with a gray thread. Now, if you don't have a serger, you can just use a zigzag to do all the stitching. But remember, you want to have some kind of a stitch that's going to have a little give because otherwise the stitches are going to break when it's stretched across the face. Okay, the final stage is actually threading the elastic. And so you're gonna to wanna to go through, up through one of the casings, over, and then down through the other one. And then you'll stitch these elastics together and you just wanna make sure that they're laying flat and that the elastic isn't twisted. Now, in those instructions, it is telling you to use a piece of elastic that's 23 and a half inches long. I think it's way too long. Um, I've been using 18 inches. The average human head is only 23 inches around. So um, you want this to fit tight against the face so that it offers protection. So I would rather have it be a little bit on the tight side than on the loose side. And you kind of have to know how much your elastic stretches too. So once you get that done, you are finished. Okay, so when your mask is finished, it should look like this. You're gonna have two elastic straps. Um, you're going to have the pocket for the filter to go into if they so choose. And then it'll look like this from the front and you're ready to give them away.